Anna, we're here now with David Yonkai marking the 50th anniversary of the death of Senator Robert Kennedy, of course the younger brother of President John F. Kennedy. During the past few days we've seen news accounts of Kennedy's death and the year 1968. I just want to welcome you. Thank you very much. All right, let's talk about that year and about that, that time when he died. Well, the thing is people should remember that 1968 was just like under 25 years after World War II. And the World War II generation fought against tyranny and disorder. And what was happening in 1968 was that their kids were actually saying that what they fought for, um, the country, the U.S. country, was in effect the United States was a country of tyranny and disorder. So it was kind of confusing for both generations. The other thing is the news cycle was incredible. I mean, every single story that you thought was going to be the story of the year blew up the next month. So wow. by the time Kennedy was shot, I mean, we had been through an assassination, we had been through a major invasion in um, Vietnam, and we also had President Johnson um, uh, recuse himself, not recuse himself, but basically withdraw from the race. Wow. Yeah. So, so there was a lot happened. of stuff going on. Yeah. A lot mm -hmm. of stuff going on that year. Do we think there was a presidential run in his history? Well, you know, see, the thing is, in or 1967, in, future, in 1967, interesting thing you bring that up because in 67, he that wasn't on his radar at all. Same thing with Martin Luther King. I mean, these two men were killed in 1968 because events basically overtook him. If Robert Kennedy had not run for president, or Martin Luther King had not, you know, gone, gotten involved with the garbage strike. If there was no garbage strike, they both would have probably lived longer lives. Absolutely. Was there any connect to our area? Uh, yes, there was a great connect to the area. Uh, Robert Kennedy came to this area in 1964 uh, to give a speech at the Scranton St. Patrick's Day dinner. Wow. Uh, it was the first speech he gave since his brother was assassinated. And when I was growing up as a kid, if you were in a Catholic family, sometimes you had three pictures on the wall, Pope John the 23rd, Jesus, and John F. Kennedy. So there was a lot of residual support sure, for, for Robert family. Kennedy in the Democratic Party, but also in this area. So when he was killed, it was, um, it was something that this area really felt. It was definitely felt here, yeah. and it's something that, uh, that was well chronicled. Um, I know that you probably remember the funeral. Can you talk to us about that? That funeral, well, first off, I come from a railroad, a railroad family, and that funeral was incredible in the sense that it gave you a good sense of who Robert Kennedy's supporters were. When you see the people on that track, they were black, they were white, they were poor, they were rich, they were military, they were peaceniks. It was a complete uh, plethora of people of different races and religions and different concerns, wow. and it just basically showed the grief that um, the nation held. And the thing is, his funeral started at 10 o'clock in the morning. He was buried at Arlington uh, later on that night at like 9.30, 10 o'clock at night. And there were thousands wow. of people that basically uh, filled those tracks. A huge show of support for someone who was a senator, not even the president exactly. of the United States. Exactly. Yeah, the Kennedy legacy at that point was still strong. Absolutely. And if folks want to read more about this, you are documenting it on your blog. If folks want to read that blog, how can they do so? Lula politicalunder.blogspot.com. Wonderful. As always, David Yonkai, our political analyst. We love having you on the show. Thank you. Thanks Happy for your to be here. input today. Let's